Hello and welcome to Solar Quotes Vodcast episode 19. Oh my, yes. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No, I have no idea. You don't know what this reference is, do you? Yeah, that's a song. People my age brought up in the UK would. Yes. In, in Queensland, we had I Was Only 19. Yeah, I prefer this one. <sighs> no taste, some people. How are you, Ronald? P- pretty good. Although I may not be Ronald, I could be anyone under this beard. I'll just point that out. Nice haircut. Oh, thank you, yes. Didn't touch the beard, though. Beard. This is my comparative advantage. The one thing I can do better than anyone else in Adelaide. Have a ridiculous beard. 6.6 kilowatt solar system. How many solar panels? Mm-hmm. One of yours? Yes, yes. Tell us more. Well, uh, solar panels, they're getting more and more efficient. Their wattages are getting higher and higher. So, uh, depending on uh, the wattage, the size, capacity of your panel, you might only need 20 or fewer to get up to around 6.6 kilowatts of solar. Now, that 6.6 kilowatts is an important figure because it's what many households can conveniently fit on their roofs without running into trouble from their DNSPs, their Distributed Network Service Providers, who say, no, you can only put in a 5 kilowatt inverter, which means you can only put in 5.66 kilowatts of solar panels. 6.66. What did I say? 5.66. Oh, yes, I, I couldn't say it out properly because it's the number of the yeast. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get a yeast infection. So, uh, 6.66 kilowatts. And there can be ways around to get more or less, depending on the situation. But if you have single phase power, you're often looking at a maximum of 6.66 kilowatts of solar panels. Yeah, it's interesting. There's still a number of solar installers out there that mm. disagree that 6.6 kilowatts is mm-hmm. the optimum size for most people. They think they, they are recommending people go smaller if they don't use much electricity. What do you think about that? Oh, they must be using microinverters. <laughs> That's what I think. No, um, I'll get onto this later, but if you fill your roof with solar, you will make a lot of money you will from the avoiding having to pay for your own consumption and you'll get a feed-in tariff and it's one of the best in best investments a household can make if you have something better to put your money into that's great mm-hmm. um, but uh, i can't think of a better one than solar for i, I which think doesn't trying, involve ridiculous risks yeah i think the, the days of trying to optimize to mm. a smaller system are over yeah um i think one of the assumptions that's wrong it, when people do that is they think it's a linear cost per kilowatt. Mm. Yeah, no. So the last three kilowatts of a 6.6 kilowatt solar system are a fraction of the price of the first three. Yeah. Because you've rolled the truck, you've got the guys on the roof, and mm-hmm. critically, the solar rebate, the federal one, is paying, paying the cost of the panels. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get it from end phase installers because they've got to buy a microinverter for every extra panel. Mm. Um, but you get it from some DC installers too, and it's. I think it's like trying to optimize the size of a fuel tank when you buy the car. Yeah, you, know, you go. That would be ridiculous because it would cost you a fortune. You you go with the size of the fuel tank that's in the car. You, yes, because that's. It might be a bit big for most of their journeys, but mm. it's the one that's in the car. It's the one that everyone's optimized to installing. Um, and if you've got really really crazy requirements, then you get one of these extended range fuel tanks. Yeah. No, it's simple. Two options. Hmm. I think some of those installers are just living in the past. When they started installing systems, when they were had their training, it made sense to go smaller because they were totally. so expensive. I remember back in the day writing a web page where I was saying, wow, if you want to get five kilowatts, <laughs> man, that's expensive. Yeah. 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 No. Big change. On a similar, in a similar vein, mm-hmm. uh, this is an article by a new writer we've got, uh, a guy called Richard Cherguin who lives Mm -hmm. off-grid in the Blue Mountains. Oh, yes, very appropriate. Uh, SA Power Networks limits three-phase exports to 15 kilowatts. So, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple of weeks ago, if you put three-phase on your house in South Australia, you could export 30 kilowatts to the grid, Mm -hmm. um, which was pretty lucrative if you got a good feed-in tariff. And a big roof. And you needed a very big roof. Now, uh, my mechanic does this, actually, Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's commercial premises. He exports Mm -hmm. 30 kilowatts. 
Um, oh yeah, he's raking it in. <laughs> so that's been chopped in half to 15 kilowatts. So you can mm. have five kilowatts of inverter per phase. Um, well, you can export five kilowatts of in per phase. So right. what do you think about that? Uh, for most people, it's not going to affect, I think it's a pity, but for most people, it's not going to affect them because you simply can't fit more than 20 kilowatts or so of uh, panels on your roof. Unless um, you live in a mansion, in which case I imagine you have a large load, yes. uh, in which case you want the big system. Yes. That would be the edge case where you lose out, where, you've got, uh, where you have the roof space and you can't fill it all up. It's a pretty first world problem yep. if you're struggling yes. to power your house on 15 kilowatts. <laughs> yes, yes. True, but you might be wanting to help out the environment. Yes. And put that green power back into the grid. Yes. So what we've got, we've got Osgrid, United Energy and Jamina, who are mm. the networks. So Osgrid's New South Wales, Jamina and United of Victoria, they'll still let you have 10 kilowatts per phase. Yep. Exports, but I think that's Excellent. about to change. Yeah, I think. Probably. Um, so I, pretty much the whole country will be five kilowatts export mm -hmm. per phase soon. Okay. So um, in Australia, they privatised the electricity sector. They divided f things into transmission, local distribution, generation. So you have these different fiefdoms. And rather than having one big electricity sector and trying to work out what's best for the country, they're all going to try to do what's best for them individually. They're going to do want the, whatever's the lowest cost for them. And that means pushing the expenses onto the people. Whereas I think it'd be much better to spend a little bit of money and upgrade the grid so that it can take all this clean green energy. And if you have to take a small portion of the feed-in tariff to do that, then so be it. It's better than wasting clean energy and ending up uh, putting more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Well, this is a symptom of having no mm. coordinated energy policy. Yeah. Because it's government so fucking useless. Yeah. I mean, you, you, mm. Angus yeah. Taylor's come out there and said, I don't think we need to do anything for the next few years. We're just going to hit our targets and reduce our emissions and everything's going to be fine. And the energy mm. industry are literally going, no, the grid's <laughs> hanging together by the skin of its teeth. We're constantly <laughs> on the edge of blackouts and it's getting mm. worse. As well. And it's not the renewables fault because Renewable integration is inevitable and it's mm. totally manageable, but you need a plan. And you get stuff like this, where, like you say, the DNSPs mm -hmm. are going to, what's the lowest cost way to integrate renewables? Yep. Put quite draconian limits on exports. Yeah. Um, and just right. to be clear, you can have bigger than a five kilowatt inverter, but you need to export limit it. So mm -hmm. you can put a 10 kilowatt inverter on there usually, mm. export limit it to five yes. and have a crap load of panels on there. But not in Western Australia, they don't allow that. True. So you've got to, not cheat, do perfectly legal, install a rectifier. Oh, yeah. you can explain we'll that. talk about that. You can explain that. Uh, before we get to that, how about this one by Michael? LG Chem Australia mm -hmm. partners with local battery recycler, a company called EnviroStream. So uh -huh. they've done a deal, I guess, to make sure all their batteries, big and small, get recycled. <laughs> well, you'd think they'd bloody well have to, wouldn't you? <laughs> do, do, do they let batteries be these big batteries be sold without some sort of agreement in place? What happens when they're no longer working? I think so. Okay. I'd bought a uh, 500 watt hour lithium ion phosphate camping battery mm -hmm. at the weekend. Right. And there's nothing to stop me dro dropping that in a skip. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't, ah. but a lot of people will. Yes. What's going to happen when that gets crushed by the... It'll burn. Garbage truck. It'll burn. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. So, but good on LG Chem mm -hmm. um, for thinking about it. Yep. Um, I don't know what Tesla's plans are. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd hope it's many years off before the Teslas need recycling. But Yes, the car batteries do well, I know that. Although there'll be a number of people pulling Powerwall 1s off their wall. Cause... Yes, but <laughs> not many were installed in the first place, but yeah. Um, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we had Canadian solar here a couple of days ago, yeah, yeah, and I was really impressed because every panel mm. that they take off for warranty, they will pay twenty, thirty dollars to get recycled. Yep, that's uh, brilliant. Yeah, good on them. It's, that's a big chunk of the price of a panel. Yeah, yeah, it must be more than the margin on the panel. Well, By a long way. 
I guess, if they're only doing the ones they replace on the warranty, yep. they must be confident that their panels will last and not be replaced on the warranty. And I can think of some panel manufacturers, if they mm. offered that, I imagine they'd be broken a heartbeat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> good on you, Canadian Salah, and good on you, LG Chem. So speaking about ways to get around the NSP limits on how many panels you can install. Yeah. Did you see my interview with Glenn? I was here, like uh, I was spying on you. Did, Did you enjoy you? it? Oh, yes. So Glenn's taken uh, whole factories off grid. He's one of the uh, foremost off grid experts in the country, I think. Mm -hmm. A company called Solarquip uh, is his uh, company. Yep. And what he does is, well, he, he takes them off grid, but they're still connected to the grid. How does that work, Finn? <laughs> So he, he uses the grid as a backup and he connects mm -hmm. them through a thing called a rectifier, which if you don't know what that is, uh, it's basically something that converts AC to DC, but it can only ever be a load. You can only uh, have electricity mm -hmm. one way, so it can only take electricity from the grid. And because the grid only sees it as a load, you do not need permission to connect that off-grid system to the grid because it's a load. Sounds great. And it's Wonderful for the environment. Yeah, so you could do that with your home. Mm. So if, you know, your DNSP, so SA Power Networks in Adelaide said, no, you can't connect any more solar panels to the grid, mm -hmm. you could decide to take part of your house off the grid, mm -hmm. but without a diesel generator, um, yeah. because you, you could connect it to the grid via a rectifier and just top up the batteries when you needed to from the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, no diesel generator involved. And I think yep. if we don't get this integrated energy policy and the DNSPs just mm have more and more draconian limits on what's going into the grid, I think that will become more common. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gorilla solar. Yeah, like EVs, mm. you know, people get EVs. Um, yeah, as you get bigger loads, I think people will look at that as an option. Mm. Um, yeah. Excellent. All right, quiz time. Mm -hmm. How much rooftop solar power can be installed in Australia? I worked this out once. If you want to get totally carried away, you can install enough rooftop solar to meet Australia's entire primary energy needs. Well, someone's purported to work it out, and I think 179 gigawatts. Huh. How much we got now? 10? Yeah. 10, 11, yeah. Mm. That is huge. That would power all our electricity use if you stored it. If you had enough storage. But, you know, if, if 1 in 10 of the cars on the road now are electric, that represents a huge amount of battery storage. So, mm. you know what will happen in the future. Getting my electric car in September. September? Yes. Okay. Is that real time for sure? Or test the time. Test loads. Can I send you on a road trip? Yes. I want to make it so you've only got about 5% charge between <laughs> chargers. Can so I? So it's really tight. Oh. It'll be an adventure for you. Oh, interesting, yes. That'll be, do I turn the air conditioner on? Mm, what speed do I go at? Yeah, Interest. All that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds great. I promise I won't drive around and around in a parking lot like that uh, journalist did. Jeremy Clarkson. Um, no, no, this is a different guy. I don't know what Jeremy Clarkson does, and I don't want to know what he gets up to. Um, no, he, he wanted to write an exciting story about running out of power in a Tesla, so he, he drove it in circles in a car park. And then Tesla said, looked at the black box and said, yeah, you were driving in circles in a car park. Now, I want you to write a truthful story about running out of power in a Tesla. Yeah. In the middle enough. of the outback, hopefully. Wait a minute. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to see exactly what happens if you're stuck and how far you can go when it says you're out of power and that sort of thing. But are you trying to get me killed? No comment. You can tell if someone's from Toowoomba by looking in their car if they're from Toowoomba, they'll have bottles of water, like under the seat or in the boot. Because they know that if your car breaks down, you will, in some places, you will just die without water. Cool. Mm. Worst review of the week, as chosen yes. by Ned. Mm -hmm. Start Solar, who I've never heard before of before. Mm -hmm. um, Victorian uh, mm. review. No transparency, expensive, lacking customer service. All offers misguided like warranty of workmanship and hardware. Uh, the sales agent will promise you a lot of things. And since the initial stages, there is no paperwork available. That's not good. You want things, in, you want things on paper before you buy, not after. Uh, except my details, including credit card and bank. Once panels are installed, the verbal agreement. Oh, mate. 
uh, for the warranty was for 10 years, but on the installer warranty document stated only five years. That's not good. No documentation provided for workmanship warranty, despite the verbal agreement as discussed. One day after installation, I noticed a crack on my ceiling and they refused to fix it, saying they didn't cause this. I don't know if they caused the crack in the ceiling, but you mm. think they'd investigate. I, maybe they did. Anyway, uh, Neri is not happy with that company. Mm -hmm. um, lessons learned, get everything in writing. Yes, yes. I mean, a verbal contract, a verbal agreement is perfectly legally binding. Trouble is, what if one person says, oh, I said this, you said something different? Yep. Yeah. That's when it all falls apart. Yes. Get in writing, you want to be safe and secure. All right, on to happier, happier times. Woohoo! Awesome installation, quality and performance beyond my expectations. This is a company, uh, they're a client called Perth Solar Warehouse, based in... Perth? You got it. Woohoo! Extremely happy with my entire experience with Perth Solar Warehouse. Derek was very accommodating and patient while I lambasted him with <laughs> questions over a six week period. Oh, Good on you, Craig. Poor, poor guy. Make him work for the money. <laughs> I got a 6.5 kilowatt system, three phase tri power SMA, and 21 risen solar panels. So that's kind of top end inverter uh, budget panels, but you know, tier one, fine. Tier uh, one, yeah. The install team were all employees of PSW and did a great job, cleaned up all the mess, uh, could not be happier with system install quality and performance. It gives them five stars for everything. Highly recommended company, which is of course a solar accredited retailer. So he's a bit confused here because they're an approved solar retailer and this is the Clean Energy Council deciding to make their names very confusing, accredited, <laughs> approved. Yeah. Uh, this is the highest accreditation. Well, it's not an accreditation, but uh, don't get it confused with basic membership. Yeah, he's, he kind of gets it. Uh, great stuff, thanks to Derek and his team. Mm -hmm. Well, I won't bang on about approved solar retailers, of which Perth Solar Warehouse are one, um, mm -hmm. but well done. Um, mm -hmm. If you click on their review page on our new Oz ranking feature. Yes, exciting new feature. To put. If you How compare they do? their average score over the last 36 months with all companies on our site, clients, non-clients, with at least 25 reviews over that period, they're in the top 1%. Ooh. Pretty good? Very good, very good. Be proud. Mm -hmm. I got absolutely hammered on Facebook this, uh, this week about our Ish, reviews. You've been drinking on Facebook again? <laughs> uh. <laughs> fucking drove me to drink, mate. I, you felt like I'd come out of 20 rounds with Mike Tyson. Uh, so a gentleman, very nice mm. gentleman, um, who runs, by all accounts, he's not a client, but he, by all accounts, a brilliant solar company. Yep. Got a three and a half star review. Oh. So it was like yeah. four star, I think, for everything else, but one star for customer service. Okay. Uh, this Happened? person, yeah, you know, this person, she rightly or wrongly, three and a half stars. perceived that she had bad customer service. Mm. Um, and he called us up and asked for a right of reply. Mm. Uh, we said, yep, mm -hmm. give yep. us the right reply and we'll publish it. Yep. What we couldn't do was this person had requested that to stay anonymous yep. because for whatever reason, rightly or wrongly, uh, this person was a bit worried about giving them a name. Yeah. Um, Fair. That's, 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 that's the prerogative of the yep. person. So we said, look, we can't give you the person's name, but we can, uh, you can absolutely have a right of reply and mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, if you uh, reassure the person that there'll be no comeback, um, you know, then you can make the situation right but obviously yep. it's impossible to do that unless you know who it is so he was frustrated mm. about the anonymous thing um but absolutely we said he could have a right of reply mm -hmm. um because you know there's privacy laws that we have to yeah. and, and privacy yeah. ethics that we have to of uh, course have to maintain yeah, can't give that stuff <laughs> there's out. a post on facebook that says do you think it's right that solar quotes won't let a non-client have a right of reply to one, a bad review well it's not yeah no that wouldn't be right but that's not no. what happened <laughs> Of course not. So I said, uh, look, I'm sorry, but you absolutely can. And we said you could. And mm. if you want to do it, you go to the review, you click the flag, you follow the prompts, it will get published. Mm. And he said, yeah, but I should be allowed to have a right reply. <laughs> I said, you can, you do this. So it took about a day and all these people piled on saying what a bastard I was and that he should sue me and all this stuff. Like it was, um, and you know, what terrible people we were. Um, mm. Not letting people have that right. Yes. Yeah, right. We, I should be oh, I should oh. be strung up by my balls. Ow. Um, sued. Everything else. Anyway. Mm. Um, I mean, here's the thing. We have a legal obligation to keep mm. negative reviews up. Yeah. Of 
course. Like what, we do. What, what would be the point of a review site? Um, if, yeah, uh, anyway. So yeah. eventually this gentleman, um, they have, they've left a really, really good right of reply. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident that this person will uh, be reassured, let them know the name and they can resolve it. And I'm yeah. sure it will be resolved. Because these mm -hmm. are very, very nice people who are just, yeah, just it was a miscommunication. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, so that was interesting. Yes. Yeah. Clearly, they, are used, they must be doing good work if a three and a half star one sends them into a tizzy. Oh, they were, they were mortified. Yes. Yeah, yeah they were, because they, they're mm. such good operators. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, man, it's a tough gig having reviews on your site. <laughs> Legally and... Mm. Uh, I spent two grand last week. Well, I haven't got the bill yet. I think it'll be two grand. Um, supporting a reviewer who was getting hassled by a solar installer, threatened by a solar installer to mm. take his genuine bad review down. Anyway. Yeah. Don't do that, people. Right, you can talk about this. Comes out of my chocolate This is good news. In the end. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Simple payback oh, time. Yeah, this is a good 6. one. 6.5 kilowatts of rooftop solar by Australian Capital. Yep. June 2019. The premise of this article is, if you buy a system, a solar system, 6.5 kilowatts is the figure I used here, because it's close to that 6.66 .66 maximum many people are limited to. And if you get that, the simple payback time in every capital in Australia will be under six years. Awesome. So that means uh, unless you have, unless you, I don't know, you're into bank robberies or something, you, you can't, uh, there's not much, not many investments that are better than that. Mm. I just, uh, let's show them the graphs. Let's show them how good it is. Oh God, I forgot to put the graphs in. Yeah. Jono, put the graph in. <laughs> you told me to put the graphs in. I told you to put the graph in. Should we pretend there's a graph there? Yes, yeah, so And then Jono can add it after. Exactly. That's the here's, miracle of modern technology. Here's the graph of payback time by Capital. Yep. And what as, does it show us, Ronald? As you can see, it's awesome in Darwin. <laughs> 2.6 years. Why is it awesome in Darwin? Okay. First, I have to point out, Darwin is the most expensive capital to get a system installed in. Yeah, you assumed $1 a watt, which yes. might be a challenge in Darwin. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. So, they get uh, a feed-in tariff. It's the highest in Australia. It's the same, equal to what they pay for grid electricity. So, if you're in Darwin and you have a roof, get solar. Just, uh, you know, get free quotes and make sure you don't pay too much. Mm. But also, you know, get a good system. So that's the best that's payback. Worst, well, surprisingly, Perth, which is the sunniest city. Mm. However, it's not quite as bad as that indicates because Perth has the lowest cost solar. So that review, Australia. Perth mm -hmm. Solar Warehouse, uh, SMA Tri-Power, Ryzen Panels, he paid $4,000 for that system. ooh -hoo, that's... So Perth is the worst, but solar is so cheap there, it would be a better. better. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah. But uh, you can see the pale blue there for Melbourne and the excellent uh, payback time of only 3.2 years. That is with... The uh, Victorian Solar Homes rebate, which is going to be a subsidy from the 1st of July. And someone from Solar Victoria told me it will be $2,250. Woohoo! So it's going to be the same price, so that calculation works out. Excellent. And uh, if you look there, Hobart is the uh, least sunny location, a least sunny capital in Australia. Kind of obvious reasons. It's cloudy. It's way down south. But you can still see, under six years, still a quick payback time. That's because First Energy is now offering a 13.5 cent feed-in tariff, and it makes a big difference. That's a great name, First Energy. Yeah. Because they're the yeah. second energy company. In yes. yes. <laughs> so, Aora would be zero energy. <laughs> zero <laughs> energy. Yes, that's right. Um, so, yeah, fill your roof with solar. Now, some caveats. Simple payback, not complex payback. You, if you add in your capital costs, it's going to be a little more expensive. On the other hand, it pays itself so quickly, your system's going to be covered by warranties for either all or almost all of this time. 
So you're not going to be out of pocket for repairs. Um, the quick payback time keeps the capital cost low. I mean, the criticism yeah. is often, oh, you've used the current feed-in tariffs, which are amazingly high at the moment. They're not going to, they're not going to turn them to zero overnight. No. They they're may decrease feeling. them, and they probably will decrease them gradually. Yeah. But by then, your system will have paid for itself. That's right. Yes. Uh, another point someone made is, what if you sell your house? Well, it will improve the value of your house. So, you know, you won't lose everything if you uh, decide to move. Yes. And mm -hmm. there's, there's at least one study that proves that it does now add to the value of your house. Yeah. If you've got a it does. good big solar system on there. Yes. Scoop! <gasps> What kind of scoop? A scoop of what? <laughs> a scoop of Canadian Solar product warranty. Oh, now 12 years. Uh, Canadian Solar, two uh, very nice gentlemen from Canadian mm -hmm. Solar came in to see us. Yeah. Uh, SQHQ in the middle mm -hmm. of Adelaide. And they spoke English really well for Canadians. Yeah, couldn't even notice the accent. Yeah. Um, didn't smell of maple syrup. Pity, I love maple syrup. There was plenty of parking mm -hmm. space for their mooses. Yep, yep, yep. Um, uh, what did we learn from Canadian Solar? They don't have to wear the Canadian mounted Yaxman uniforms at all times. Not anymore? Yep. Oh, and they've increased their product warranty on their panels from 10 years to 12 years. Excellent. Is... What else did you learn about Canadian solar? Oh, all their panels mm. are going to be half cut or That's shingles. That's a big call. Everyone they sell in Australia. No more normal solar panels? No, no more normal cells, panels with full cells on them. Some people are very sceptical about half cut solar panels. I... Uh, what do you think? When they first made them, they were done by hand, and they did have a high failure rate. I don't know, you know, I'm not talking about Canadian solar panels, I'm talking about in general. The first ones on the market did have high failure rates, because there's so many solders to, solder connections to make, and some, so some got screwed up. And, um, yeah, so that was bad, but now it's all done by robots. So the, the robots, I'm sorry, they've got us beat when it comes to things like that. Personally, I'm not worried. I would, I'd have them on my roof. Yep. You'd have From, a robot on your roof? Yeah, and I'd have Canadian solar panels too. The robot <laughs> oh. could clean them. Oh, yeah, good point. Uh, and if there is a, you know, if they find some major flaw in half-cut panels, because they've only been out a year or so, a couple yeah, of years, yeah. a company like Canadian Solar will have to replace them all under warranty. Yep. And, and pay to recycle them. Yes, yes. Um, that's, so that's good. Yeah, that's why you go for a reliable company. You're co you will be covered. They've got 50... 50 staff apparently in Australia. Yeah, That's 50, good. 55, yeah. Uh, some big solar panel companies have a, you know, a couple of people, mm. something like that in Australia. So that's, yes. you know, that's a feather in their Mounties cap. Yes, yes. I mean, if you've only got three or four people and something bad happens, you start paying out more and warranties than you thought you had to, you could go, yep, yeah, bye, <laughs> disappearing. Yep, good old Canadian solar. They're... Uh, they're pretty cheap panels, but they're pretty yep. good panels. That's right. Which is uh, quite hard to do. Mm. So how do they compare to Tesla panels? Tesla tiles. Oh, yes. So Tesla tiles. Don't they look good? This is on Electrek on the internets this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, they've sourced a picture yes. of what they're going to look like. You see they're installed on an American roof, so it's, yeah. it's a full wooden roof. It's a weird roof. So they'd have to work out how to install that on an Australian roof, because yes. almost no one has a roof like that in Australia. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if they wanted to sell them here, they could just, you know, modify them so they could use them here. But uh, will they do that? When will they be available? Uh, so, Jono... Will they work with our electricity? What? Jono spoke to a lady from the American consulate. So Ooh. probably knows what she's talking about. She asked Tesla, and they said they're two years away in Australia. Tesla right. time! Uh, consulate? Consulate. Consulate. And aren't they appointed by American politicians? Probably. That's a bit of a worry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So Tesla say they're at least two years away in Australia. But they're still taking deposits on their website for it. How is that legal? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can I, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll sell you, you know, anything, man. I'll hey, hey, do you want to buy Audrey Hepburn's falsies? I'll, I'll give them to you some point in the future. Just put down a thousand dollars now. How, how's that not fraud? If you, if you want Tesla tiles in two years' time, mm. buy them in two years' time. I don't think you need to put down a deposit to get to the front of the queue. Yeah, it's my guess. Yeah. Well, maybe you do, but you let the other people see if they work well or not. Um, Elon Musk says originally he said this would. I'm pretty sure he said this would be cheaper than a. Or the same price as a regular roof? No, no, it costs less. Right. 
Now he's saying it will be the same cost as a regular roof plus your electricity bills. <laughs> For how many years? And they're gonna be enormously expensive compared to Australian solar, which is yes. the cheapest in the world, yeah. pretty much. They cost a fortune. Mm. You've got to be really, really angry about the aesthetics of solar panels <laughs> to pay the yes. extra. Yes. But you know, go for it if you want. Mm -hmm. It's not without risk. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, not very widely used technology, but. Um, no, I'd, I'd have no problem with it. From what I've seen, it works well, but, uh, oh, well, it works reliably. That's what I should say. Anyway, you can, if you're worried about how solar looks, consider taking a bit of a hit to your production, maybe and putting the panels on the south side of your roof or something. My house, mm. you can't actually see the solar panels. Yeah, lots of houses you can't. Two-story house, 15-degree roof. Yep. You cannot see them, mm -hmm. um, which is a shame because I'd love to see them. Yes, <laughs> exactly. They're very pretty Tindo panels before they... Mm -hmm. The original Tindo panels with frames about that thick, Ooh. they don't make them anymore. Oh. They actually look really nice. Mm. Built like a tank. <laughs> yes. Um, any corrosion problems in your location? 400 meters from the sea? No, I don't think so. All good. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say before we wave goodbye? No, no, just um, uh, let the sun shine in. Got it. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Ciao.